Hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and I'm very glad you're joining us again today. Today we're going to have another very interesting, very special show. We have with us writer, director, filmmaker, and actress, Georgina Lightning, who's made a number of films. And this one today that we'll be focusing on is called Older Than America, starring Bradley Cooper, Adam Beach, and Georgina herself. It's a film that uncovers uh, one of the most harrowing, upsetting stories of when the Anglos came from Europe and tried to colonize the native peoples here into their, corral them, into their religious schools. The Catholics, the Protestants, everyone tried to get in on that kind of action. It meant government money, subsidies, all sorts of things, and the curing of the savages. It's uh, just a tale that strikes you in the heart and squeezes you. Anyway, we're going to turn right now to a clip, and then followed by that, a conversation with Georgina Lightning. Georgina, welcome to A Better World. Thanks for having me, Mitchell. So clear why we need a better world. That film uh -huh. was daunting, awesome, painful, but at the end, redeeming. Thank you. I mean, Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about it. I know it's based on the true story of your own family. Yeah. Just unpack it if it Well, you um, it's based on a true story, uh, true events, actually, uh, yes. all over North America. <clears throat> it was made mandatory that children were removed from their homes and brought into these residential school systems. And it was over 100 years of residential school that happened. So several That's the Catholic school or the religious school yeah, where well, the, the, the government appointed. Government, government appointed. appointed. Think, yeah. um, and actually, whoever, whoever had the lowest bid. So any church could bid for the running of a school, and whoever had the lowest bid um, could take over that school. And in the region, region where I grew up and where my family was uh, brought into residential school, it was which is dominated by Catholics. Which is where? In Alberta, that whole western region of Canada. So yeah, it was predominantly Catholic. So my dad went to re two residential schools. One was called Gruard, uh, very notoriously known as a, a very dark, dark, dark uh, educational system that was there, institutionalization there. Um, and then uh, he later went to St. Mary's School in the city of Edmonton. So that's actually where we ended up living. He met my mom, I married, see. and we lived there. And did your mother go through a similar kind of uh, indoctrination? No, no, she did not go to residence. So she escaped that whole... She's got a different colony. Like, she's got a different uh, background of trauma from the Ukrainian system. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. So she wasn't native. No. But native to Ukraine, yeah. we should say. Yes. Right. And uh, her family migrated to Saskatchewan and later moved to Alberta. Oh, okay. So you were mixed between, yeah. and what was the tribe? The it's native? Cree. I'm Cree. coming from the Cree nation. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just awesome. And it was beyond, it didn't matter what tribe you were from or mm -hmm. one was from. Everyone was fair game if you were native to the Americas. Yeah, it was a part of the mandatory uh, assimilation process. It was an agenda by the government to eliminate, it. well, the, the General Pratt coined this, uh, kill the Indian, save the man. So it was to um, get rid of the culture and the identity the of... The General Pratt, you said? A General Pratt. Which is? He's, he was in the army. Oh, General okay. General Pratt. Oh, I got it. And he coined the phrase, kill the Indian, save the man. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. The attitude is not... It's so inhumane, yeah. and you capture that brilliantly in the film. Thank you. You really do. The, uh, one of the scenes, and this is enticing you to go see the film in full, uh, when the Catholic priest is speaking with you uh, toward the end and says, well, what do you expect us to do? We have to take you savages yeah. and give you a proper education. Mm -hmm. Subtext, even if we have to abuse you and violate you and even kill you yeah. to get you to accord with our way. By whatever means necessary. By whatever means necessary, yeah. right. And right. they felt that it was their <clears throat> right 
to violate. Because, uh, you know, part of my, my thinking, because uh, this was a very cathartic, therapeutic process for me oh, to yeah. make this, because uh, we grew up um, in a household where, I mean, we were raised with residential school mentality. So it was by whatever means necessary, shut up and don't speak unless you're spoken to, you know, children are not to be heard. Um, so, you know, it was very silent in our home. There was no communication, there was no interaction, and there was domestic violence, child abuse, all that kind of stuff. Because cycles don't stop unless you're aware that they're wrong. Exactly. So when you grow up in that and you th it's become normalized, that's, that becomes sure. the norm it's in the your whole community. the water you're swimming in. Sure. Absolutely. So what you're saying then, Georgina, is that your father's indoctrination Mm -hmm. and alienation from his own native Cree culture, language, yes. attitude, relations mm -hmm. were so distorted he brought the Catholic way, the new way, mm -hmm. into your very household. Yeah, that's how it, it was learned behavior. So he didn't, right. he didn't know how to parent. He didn't know how to communicate. Boys and girls were separated yeah. in the school. So uh, that's a, a large issue. Uh, disconnection, fragmentation of family units. Uh, men don't know how to relate to women and don't understand that dynamic. Uh, it was shifted from natural law where women and men are equal and it became men are the dominant and women are just subservient. So that was definitely what, what, what happened in my home. My mom was a servant to my father's, um, yeah. you know, whatever his whim was. Did your father know Cree before no. the oh, well, it, school? See, he was raised uh, way far up in the north and uh, in, in the Gruard area. So, um, and that was pretty much the, when the separation, because my aunts and uncles, you know, um, they speak Cree. But then in the residential school, they wipe it away from you. But that's what I was wondering, if yeah. he had the language originally mm -hmm. and it was taken away from him. But you're saying that he never <clears throat> learned it. Well, it, it's, yeah. See, that was a conscious choice back then. Um, oh. you know, it, and we never know because my dad died when I was 18. So, I mean, we never, I never I saw see. him really engage unless my aunts and uncles from the North came in and they would just show up all of a sudden and stay at our house for a few days and then they'd be gone and we wouldn't really? see them again. Um, but that's the only time I saw him engage oh. or talk and there was Cree in our house. Oh. Otherwise he never spoke it. He never he was racist himself. We were not allowed to, like we, we were in the city and we were not allowed to hang out with native kids. Oh my God. You know, it was, it was so it was a weird mixed message. It's like, oh, don't bring, yeah. you know, what are you doing hanging out with those Indian boys? Um, because uh, they all went to the Catholic school. Me and my sisters went to the public school because my dad didn't want us anywhere near a church or anywhere near the Catholic school where all the Indian kids went. So he put us in a public school. Yeah. And we okay. didn't know why. That's we interesting, though. So on one hand, he was indoctrinated by the Catholics, um, and they had him turn away from Cree, but he was also repelled by the Catholics yeah. and wouldn't let you anywhere near them. Yes. So even though they were the source of his own, let's say, corruption mm -hmm. uh, and distortion of reality, yeah. he also was at least in touch with his anger about them. Absolutely. Yeah. He detested that whole thing. We were not allowed to go into a church or anything like that, like, or to go to the Catholic. He, in his mind, that was his way of protecting us. So it was a weird situation. I mean, as an adult, I can look back on it. And I can see where, you know, in his way, he was trying to protect us. Exactly. We never had an explanation. We didn't understand why. We, you know, all you know is all of the native kids are going to a Catholic school, and you're in a white school where they're racist and they hate you. Why would? Why do you have to go to that school? But there's no explanation. Oh, you know, so God. you're just like, mm, okay, because there's severe racism in the in the public school, and there's only, you know, maybe three or four of you Indians in, in a white school. So, God. it's just a weird mixed what message. What a way of treating children, yeah. or anybody for that matter, but children who are especially susceptible, vulnerable, sensitive, mm -hmm. without uh, another frame of reference, yeah. even for their immune system, yes. let alone their psyche. Mm -hmm. you know? So was your exposure then to Cree culture only when your uh, aunts and uncles came to visit? Yeah, that was the only time I, we, we were connected with anybody. 
uh, as far as that goes. But there was not really, like adults didn't talk to children, children didn't talk to adults. It was like kids are over there, adults oh, are over I here. See. So there was no engagement there either. There's no engagement. It was just, you, you see, if you, you look over and you can see what they're doing. But there was no interaction or anything like that. The fragmentation already happened because you got to remember, this is generations of trauma. Yeah. So the fragmentation and the separation exactly. and that natural law <clears throat> and community sense was already gone. So none of that was that was happening. I never saw an example of any of that until later um, when I was soul searching myself. And the first, uh, you know, cultural experience I had was in a, the closest reservation to my city, which was Enoch. And I went to a powwow, and I just like, I was so overwhelmed. There was something going on, and I didn't oh understand what it God. was. But I was just like, feel I felt connected. It's like an awakening of your DNA. Totally. You know. And then I never stopped. I just kept going towards it, and I was the only one in my family. Really, not your sister. No, they won't have anything to do with it. My my only uh, surviving aunt, who's native, who my, my my dad's only sister, when I actually was going on a healing journey, and I went up to her and said, could could you please come with me? I want to go on a medicine wheel healing journey and do some ceremonies. And it was told to me in a ceremony, I need women, not men. I need women to be with me. Would you come with me? And she said, no. And she actually said, and excuse my language, she said, I think that's bullshit. I think what you're doing is bullshit. And no, I won't. Uh, and then she went into this, this uh, hatred. Uh, she let me know how she actually has a resentment and hatred towards Native Americans, her memories, but being back home up north were horrible. Was that, was she then characterized in the, aunt, your mother's sister in the Auntie film? Apple. yes. Someone who's, who's completely whitewashed oh. and doesn't want anything to do with that side because it's, yeah, she, and that's, that's a survival mechanism. Of course. You know, self-hatred was, was taught to hate yourself and to loathe being the savage so you want to be anything but so you become whitewashed totally. and try your best it's you, a survival you never will mechanism though. it's an adaptation absolutely and it's sad you know it's but. profoundly sad and yet one can understand in some way totally why yeah. it's just the decimation it leads to the decimation of an original culture yeah and, and it's your the success. cultural it roots. shows the success of the intent of the mission, the agenda, yep. which is to kill the Indians. Exactly. Them. And they succeeded exactly. with her. And that's what's sad. I left there very sad for her because she'll never, she'll never heal, first of all. She's so right. full of pain. Right. And she got emotional and she started crying. But she's going she's gonna to die that way. That's and she'll right. never, ever that's get right. that chance to connect Not in this to life. who she is. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. Well, uh, I'm not going to tell everybody what happens with her toward the end. <laughs> and that's what, in the work I do, Georgina, that's called therapeutic theater, where you can yeah. actually engage God's beautiful gift of imagination yeah. and come up with the outcomes and the yeah. results you want, right. <laughs> distinct from what you know, ordinary life might bring. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Bradley Cooper and Anna, they, they guy, these guys were remarkable. In the film, they really were. And not to mention, your own acting was very powerful. Thank you. But really, I thought you directed this really with such a fine, artful touch. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. I had a while to develop it from when I woke up one morning and committed to this. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it took about a year to develop the script and get it to the place where I was happy with it. Mm -hmm. And I knew it so well because you're working with it. Yeah. So then when you go to, um, you know, to direct it, the role that I, uh, you know, was taking on Rain was um, a very easy role for me to play because I knew her very well. Yeah. And because of the magic sure. of, of today's uh, filmmaking techniques, we have playback. So that was my saving grace. <laughs> Had we been doing film, I don't know what would have happened because like, yeah, right. we didn't have the, the money, the, the video power, to have the luxury to like film a block, you know, block it, rehearse it, shoot the rehearsal, and then go back to playback and look and go, mm, no, exactly. okay, Rain needs to be here. I did this, and then go and shoot that again, and then go in and say, okay, now let's go exactly. ahead. And then you feel it. You know yeah. when you're feeling the connection with the other actor. So you can just say, cut, print, we're good. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But we are allowed to do that now with playback. Instant feedback. So, you know? yeah, that's, so, what, that's what made it the success it is. Yeah. I had that luxury yeah. Yeah. of playback. That's yeah. right. What's also just interesting overall, just looking at, you know, 
the nature of mankind, humankind, yeah. but largely mankind. And it really might be ultimately a hormonal issue. <laughs> now, yes. I look at this a lot. Like, yes. what is the basis of the violence in our world? Mm -hmm. And what is the toss-up between testosterone and estrogen? Yes. And I really think that a lot of what goes on is in the name of these imbalanced hormones yes. from one gender to another. And we have the full capacity to balance the hormones inside ourselves yes and there are also other aspects of course such as food and movement exercise mm -hmm. sleep patterns self-regulation mentally and emotionally I mean there are ways to do it but to regulate yourself and I 100% agree with you that yeah. it is the endocrine system yeah. um, if we can learn to like if, if first of all we submit ourselves to the understanding that the endocrine system is so incredibly complex, and it really is the one that's in the, the system that is helps to regulate the stomach and the brain as a whole. It's the yeah. command center. That's what yes. fuels that engine yes. in a healthy way yes. to balance cognitive and emotional well-being. So, yep. you know, if that's violated because the stress, stress which produces cortisol, is so it, that whacks you out and imbalances you. So, that's if right. we could just submit ourselves to getting uh, hormone checks, I would, I would bet anything, anything that I ever have and will have mm -hmm. on the, the fact that if, if we were to all go get hormone checks and looked at our levels and got those balanced, we would have a different gosh, world. Oh my God, we would have such a tremendously different world. And, well, and the yeah. $440 billion that's spent on mental illness, drugs in this country alone per year, would completely minimize. Yeah, plant-based hormones can regulate you. Yeah. Well, we would look at hormonal profile and also in utero, conscious conception mm -hmm. through birthing. Yes. And the information, the relationship between husband and wife during uh, the in utero period mm -hmm. and the learning and the energy that is embedded in the embryo from the attitudes and the great the love or the lack of love mm -hmm. of the parents yeah. and their relationship in turn with their parents yes. so it's a generational thing what's impacting the consciousness mm -hmm. including the hormones yes. of the embryo let alone the fetus and then the little infants yeah do you know well we it, it's I think understood all in of our this culture is part of it yeah uh, that we inherit seven generations of our ancestors yes so whatever experiences my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my great-great-grandmother had, my great-grandfathers, that lives inside of me. And then whatever happened with my parents while I, my brain was developing, that mm -hmm. all gathers in with an imprint that stamps my DNA. Yeah. And that's right. what I'm living with. Exactly. We're all living with that. Yes. And that's so, the point is that we have the leverage mm -hmm. to make the change because we yes. have the knowledge of what's actually creating the mind and the heart and the body of the human being. Yes. So. So then we have the spirit on top of it. So even though I have the same, you know, my sisters have the same DNA. We're so three completely different. Yes. I took a different path and wanted culture yeah. and wanted ceremony, and my sisters wouldn't have anything to do with it. So. But we were raised in the same home. Right. And we have this two same parents. Right. You know, exactly. So, yeah. so I know the film that you're making now does address this. Mm -hmm. So we're going to definitely have you back on to discuss when that film comes to uh, yeah. the theaters. And, you, and watch out for it, Fantasy of Flying yeah. is called, yeah. But circling back to, and by the way, I love the name Older Than America. <laughs> <laughs> What's that gonna be about? Yeah. I know I ask myself, you know. Right. And what I love about it is that it is harrowing indeed, and we are all experiencing the pain that we as a collective need to experience, mm -hmm. to be very sober about the seriousness of the offenses, yeah. and then redemption. Yeah. You bring us back around. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to say more about that. <laughs> but <laughs> truly, it's a film you want to see. But indeed, you come full circle for the catharsis. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh. 
Thank you. <laughs> really, it thank is on you. iTunes. Anyone can watch it on iTunes. iTunes? Yeah, oh, okay. you can download oh, it on great. iTunes. It's been great. on TV a lot, but yeah. iTunes, Wonderful. anybody in the, can watch it right anybody now. Anybody in the world. If you don't come to the film festival this weekend. That's yeah. right. Yeah. In fact, I'm glad you brought that up because Georgina Lightning is in New York and in our studio. Thanks to Nancy Rhodes and the Encompass uh, new theater festival, uh, new theater, and the Paradigm Shifts Festival, music and film festival, that is taking place. Actually, it's now becoming an annual event, and one you want to really tune into. We have it on our website at betterworld.tv, and we'll be featuring you, yes. and I'll be moderating that discussion with the audience mm -hmm. coming, coming up real soon. Yes. So, well, it's really been a pleasure. This is just. Um, a very important thing for me personally. It sounds funny, but when I was 14, I read a book that my mother, God bless her, gave me on native peoples in the United States. Mm -hmm. And it had an introduction by none other than Marlon Brando, yes. who was a tremendous advocate and supporter mm -hmm. of native people's rights yes, and lifestyle and culture. Yeah. And I read that and I was 14. I remember it so well. Mm -hmm. oh, kidding me my ancestors not literally mine but mm -hmm. the, anyone did this to anybody yeah I was young and I was shocked and, and horrified yeah. and I swear Georgina to that from that day I have never lost track of that sentiment mm -hmm. when it comes to literally all people but in, especially in the people of my homeland yeah. you know and what we have done and, mm -hmm. There's more to it, but for another time. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for having me, Mitchell. Absolutely, Georgina. You're doing beautiful work. Thank you. This is Mitchell J. Rabin for A Better World. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. This film is a real winner. Georgina Lightning is the first female Native American filmmaker to reach this level of prominence. I believe that's the... Uh, the frame that they have given. I'm not supposed to say yeah. that in front of you, but it's true. And uh, it's uh, a film really worth seeing. Contact me at mjr at betterworld.net, mjr at betterworld.net. Love hearing from you, your feedback, and visit us at www.abetterworld.tv and get on our newsletter, free newsletter, and become part of a better world family. Thanks so much for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you all next week.